Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and I'm asking myself, why is nobody making a mouse with a motion sensor? I mean, phones do it all the time. Couldn't be so hard, right? In my quest of making an open source variant of everything after the keyboard, we now have reached the mouse. This was requested by a viewer and also it's the logical next step to do. So I've scoured the internet far and wide for mouse parts and it turns out mouse sensors, modern ones, are not commonly stocked at any distributor and I think I know why. Because people are not making bespoke mouses anymore. It's more of a super industrial thing where one company designs a mouse, licenses that design to a lot of others and they make it in a million variants. And they usually get their sensors directly from the manufacturer. So for a person that is just trying to make one mouse, it's not like makes any sense that people would stock these sensors anymore. So you either have to make use of new old stock devices or salvage one, which is not acceptable if you want to make a truly open source variant because people should get the, all the parts they need all the time, right? For about 20 years, I've been using the same mouse. It's a Logitech BT83, a corded optical mouse from back in the day. And it was usually given to you for free when you bought a computer back then. And I'm pretty sure somebody just gave it to me because they would throw it away anyway. And so I started my project with drawing it up in FreeCAD. So I have the actual mouse shell already 3D designed because I really like the shape and the size. That is what a mouse should be shaped, I think. And now we're designing the insides in KiCad. Welcome to my computer and KiCad. This is all the schematic that we need. It's Kinda simple. Here's our main processor, an USB 32S3. Why? Because we need Bluetooth. This one has it. We have a USB-C port. We have some ESD protection. We have this uh, circuit that I've used many times for battery charging and protection. Uh, some of the parts are already in R&D, but I have them in stock, so I can use them directly. And I also found some replacements for that in case you want to build them, you can still get all the parts. This is the MPU 6050, another NRD part. Nice times we're living in, but this is still commonly available. It's a very popular uh, inertial measurement unit, especially for Arduino projects, because there are a lot of libraries that use it. Uh, it's pretty simple to set up. It's really important that you have the right capacitor values, especially the 2.2 nanofarad. That turns out to be crucial. If that is wrong, then the readings aren't right. Also make sure that you have the coupling caps on there so your voltage source is really stable. Uh, I have two buttons on here that have pull-ups on here so I can be sure that the button state is not some floating value. This is also important. This little header lets me put the device in download mode so I can easily program it. And if we look at the design, then you can see it's quite compact. It's really narrow. That's because it has to fit in a shell that is exactly the size of my mouse. This is the mouse that I've been using for the last 20 years and it's completely polished, <laughs> like flat. Even the writing on the bottom is now fading away. <laughs> That's how much I use my mouse. So I don't want to give that up and it would be nice to have one that is equally as good. Let's see if we can make that happen if it uses a weird sensor that is even better. If I put that into 3D, so this is pretty flat. The battery will sit on top. This is the power switch will we'll go to the bottom because most mice have a power switch on the bottom and on the front, which is obvious, good design. Here is the plug for the charging cable. So it basically turns into a wired mouse like this when you're charging it and not like a, a specific mouse from a, from a fruity company that gets completely useless once the battery has to be charged, which is awful design. And if you don't agree, let's bring this to Eisler to, for manufacturing and then get the boards made, assembled and put into the case.
The PCBs just came back from Eisler, look gorgeous as always, and this is now ready to be assembled. As usual, I solder all the crucial components first and boot it up once to see if it is alive or if there is a hardware fault. And it was alive. It did recognize the motion sensor, which is an MPU 6050. I just had that in stock. No particular different reason for using that. And even though it recognized it, it would only deliver zeros. Hmm. So the device is showing up, but it's only reading garbage. I googled a lot and turns out this is a pretty common problem. So I tried to reflow the device again and I've used some test sketches that I found on the internet to just see if the MEMS cores, the actual measurement bits of the device are actually delivering any data. And turns out one is the one for the temperature but the other two, which are for gyro and acceleration, are not. And this points me towards a hardware failure. Yeah, well, how did I break that thing? So I have asked around in the maker community what could kill the device after soldering it. And it turns out, it's that thing. Not the lamp, that's just for show. It's the ultrasonic cleaner. So it turns out, a lot of these inertial measurement units are pretty susceptible to... Susceptible, they get damaged easily when you hit them. And what is an ultrasonic cleaner doing? It's basically hitting it many times per second. So washing in ultrasonic cleaners might not be recommended for such devices. So I've exchanged a part and this time I didn't clean it in that cleaner. So the recommended method for cleaning PCBs if you can't put them in to uh, ultrasonic cleaner is to use isopropyl alcohol and this specialty PCB cleaning brush, of course. Next step in the bring up process is to solder all the remaining bits and also connect the battery because I also have to check if the charging is working as intended because this thing will work over Bluetooth. It also has, of course, to have an internal battery. And then we go over to the code. Welcome to the Arduino ID. Wait, 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 stop, 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 stop. Okay, uh, I was supposed to show you some easy code that just works. Uh, the trouble is, it is not easy. And you only understand when it, that it's really not easy when you try it for yourself. Okay, so deriving lateral motion, that means the motion a mouse usually makes, which is like this and like this, or 2D motion basically, derive that from an inertial measurement unit, that is really hard math. Really hard. I found a lot of uh, stuff around this topic. A lot of people are writing, it's really hard, but it's doable somehow. And I found a paper, like a university document, where they pulled it off. But they needed two IMUs, a lot better ones than the one I have, and it was like not very good. It was usable. So, Turns out, boy, this is really hard. The trouble is you have to have integrals of integrals, which is math at a level that I'm not smart enough to do. I copy pasted a lot of code and tried out different versions, but they all end up with the same uh, result. The math adds up so quickly that either your mouse pointer doesn't move at all, or it just zooms around the screen completely uncontrollably. So I can't really figure out how to do lateral motion just from one IMU, sorry. So we will have to like make a different kind of mouse basically. A traditional mouse with just a single IMU, nope. That's the reason why they don't do it, because it's a bad idea, it just doesn't work right. Or at least it's not cost effective, if you would pull it off it would be a not better mouse than another one, but it would surely be a lot more expensive mouse. So, worse and more expensive, not good on the market. So that's why they don't make IMU mouses. So what about a different type of mouse? If I would do a trackball, I would have exactly the same problem because I would have to measure the lateral change in movement from the ball to the thing, which is exactly the same, like trackballs work like normal mouses, just they have the sensor fixed and they move the ball, aka the surface. But in principle and in code, it's exactly the same thing. So that doesn't work. But there's a different kind of mouse that a lot of people really hate and some really like. 
And I don't, I'm not talking about the trackpad because we, we're not building a trackpad. But I mean this little nipple here, this little nebbin, this track point, I think it's the right name. It's on IBM slash Lenovo laptops and a lot of others also have it now too, which moves around uh, your mouse just with little movements. And basically that's like a little disc that is moving like that, which is like a gyroscopic movement. Get it? Maybe we can track that movement a lot better. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. So here's a little model. Sorry, didn't have time to paint it or to build it to scale. Well, actually I did. Okay, here's the scale model that I did paint and that <laughs> it looks pretty much like the original. The only difference is it already has buttons. That's because it has already the PCB inside. So this tracks the movement in this direction, that direction, that direction. And this is the way we can move our mouse pointer by moving this in space. So we basically built an air mouse. But how does it work? Let's check out the code. Welcome to the Arduino ID, finally. Okay, it took me really long to get to a working state for this and make the program still easy. So all the math stuff for lateral movement derived from inertial measurement that didn't work out. It, it just freaks out all over the place. Integrals of integrals are super hard. And I think there is also some math glitching involved with the processor, so it, it never yields a, a usable result. The only versions that I could find that claim to be working use onboard preprocessing and then final processing on a, like a single board computer just to translate that on the computer. So it, the mouse only gives raw value and then the, the computer interprets that in its own reference frame, which is like, total overkill that we would be back to completely uh, making your own mouse driver for every device. So no, not going there. But this is now a super simple solution for a 3D mouse. So basically what we've done is we built a symmetrical mouse that it can use with both hands, which I actually often do like a switch hands sometimes when I use mouses because I'm kind of ambidextrous with that. So, uh, this now doesn't track this movement, it tracks this movement and quite good, I have to say. The code is really simple. So basically, no matter where you put it in space, you can move a mouse point on the screen and you also have your clicks ready. But this thing doesn't really track this movement because that's, as we discovered, really hard to do. It looks like a mouse, it does the thing that it does like a mouse and an air mouse can be practical in some applications, but it's not a traditional mouse. So we have gone from let's build the thing we all know to let's build a simple, easy Bluetooth air mouse thing. Well, that's how it goes. So to demo this, we should find an actual use case where this thing is actually useful compared to a normal mouse. And I found one. When I'm filming these videos, guess what? I'm using a phone <laughs> to control my camera. So that means that I have to put it somewhere. But if I maybe like want to like change some settings or stuff without touching the phone or uh, breaking off my recording, I could now use this mouse and control my phone with it. Android phones are basically just Linux computers in a small case. Uh, so the moment you connect a mouse to this, a mouse pointer shows up and you can freely move it around on the screen. And that of course allows me to navigate like I would have done with a normal mouse or with my finger, I just don't have to be so close. So if I would, for example, use a computer or a phone for uh, stuff like text scrolling as a teleprompter or have references on screen while I'm filming or while I just can't be so close to it, I can use this mouse, navigate in the air and still move my mouse point around or try to use it for some games, but that might be a bit hard. Sometimes you just want to do a simple project that ends up a lot more complicated than you anticipated. Which happened to me. I wanted to make a simple mouse. 
but turns out it is really hard to make one if you restrict yourself to just using this inertial measurement unit sensor instead of a real mouse sensor because I, cut, I just couldn't get one and you would have the trouble too. And if I would salvage one, you wouldn't find that particular sensor. So it was really hard to recreate the project. But turns out it is really easy to make a Bluetooth 3D Air mouse. And I really like the design. Look at this, it looks like a little face. Uh, reminds me of the little knob on the keyboard of the laptop. And this one turned out kind of useful. It's a different kind of mouse that you have to get used to if you really want to use it. But if you want to make your own, that is really easy. Just go to the Element 14 community and download all the files for it. They are all for free there. You can also go there to ask questions or discuss with other people about this and many other projects. And I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.